News Network. Welcome to play-by-play coverage of Georgia football. Bulldogs football is brought to you by Zaxby's, the official ice of the Georgia Bulldogs. Pruitt Health, family makes us stronger. Hoffman Financial Group, helping build your financial dynasty. Dos Equis, a proud sponsor of Georgia Athletics. Get a dose. Enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. And by Southeast Mortgage, the official home loan lender of the Georgia Bulldogs. Now to the Piedmont Healthcare broadcast booth. Alongside former All-American Eric Zier, here's the voice of the Bulldogs, Scott Howard. Well, we're almost officially underway. We have called the dogs, and the man calling the dogs today, uh, world hot dog eating champion Joey Chestnut. <laughs> that was kind of out of the left field. Uh, that was pretty fun, though. Joey Chestnut wearing his uh, championship uh, hot dog eating belt that he won on uh, the 4th of July up there in New York at Nathan's. And uh, kind of a fun moment for him, I'm sure, in front of Sanford Stadium crowd here as we get ready for Bulldog football. Let's and let's go down to DJ Shockley, who's on the field for the coin toss. Shock. All right, fellas, we got Marcus Roman Jack Saint, Thy Loge, Tyke Smith, and Tate Ballage. Ball State, you guys are the visiting team. Are you speaking for your team? Yes, sir. All right, you're going to be calling the coin toss today. We've got a normal silver dollar there. That's heads. That's tails. You see that? That's heads. That's tails. I want you to call it loud enough so that he can hear what you're calling. What's your call? Heads. What did he say? Heads. He said heads. The call is heads. It's tails. Georgia, you want the toss. You want to receive the ball. Hey, fellas, dogs asked for the ball. They talked about it in here right before the pregame. Coach Bubbo said if we get the chance to take the ball, we want the ball first, and they are taking it because we want to start fast. All right, Shock, thanks very much. Georgia wins the toss. Dogs, as you just heard, will receive the opening kickoff, and it's time to tee it up between the hedges once again. Our opening kick powered by Georgia Power. Doesn't matter where in the Peach State you're cheering on the dogs. Georgia Power is energizing your community. Visit georgiapower.com slash community to learn more. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. WDNG, 1450 AM. And W236, CQ, 95.1 FM. Aniston. 95.1 The Mountain. Aniston Oxford's Classic Station. Fans continuing to file in. Wind blowing out to the west from the bold portion of the stadium. The flags are uh, waving in the direction of the bridge, if you're familiar with the setup here at Sanford Stadium. Not sure what the wind is like down on the field, actually, but the wind is uh, whipping pretty good from east to west right now as uh, Eric Zire joins us again. And Z, uh, dogs mixing it up a little bit with the coin toss. They win the toss. Normally, we've seen them defer. uh, But today, I don't know, maybe the weather is playing part of this. They think it's going to be wet maybe later in the game. They want a fast start, so they're going to take the the opening kickoff here on offense. I I actually like the the train of thought. Definitely uh, different than what we typically see where we want to defer into the second half to get the ball coming out of the locker room. But but you take into account the weather that, that could get a little bit dicey later in the game. The fact that we did not start very fast last week, and that's really been the challenge to this uh, offensive unit, really this entire team, has come out play hard from the get-go and see if we can get off to a little better start. So Ball State will send their kick unit out, and they'll be kicking from the east to the west, from right to left. Jack Drake, a graduate from Zionsville, Indiana, will be handling their kickoff duties and back deep for Georgia as the dogs put their return team out on the field. Makai Muse, a very exciting number 87. And the up back is Dylan Bell, one of our wide receivers. And he'll stand on about the 10 yard line on the far hash. Muse on the near hash and backs up about two yards deep into the end zone. Now the sun peeks out from behind the curtain of clouds gathered overhead here in Athens. And we are ready for football. Georgia and Ball State is underway right now as the kick 
will sail high end over end. Going to come down on the goal line to Muse. He'll take it at the 5, at the 10, the 15, near side 20. Bounces out 30, near side line 40. Cuts in at the 45, and they go low and knock him down around the 46, maybe the 47-yard line. A wide receiver, Nick Munson, a redshirt freshman, made the tackle on special teams. Terrific return by the little guy, Makai Muse, and he's hearing about it now on the sidelines as his teammates mob him. Boy, great start there for Georgia Muse, having a really nice start to his season. Had the touchdown pass last week. Uh, Great return there, able to get outside and find a lot of green grass. Marvin Jones laid a nice block for him to spring him for that 47, 48-yard return. Peyton Woodring, the freshman from Lafayette, Louisiana, on to try a 28-yard field goal from the far hash, kicking right. The holder is Beck. The snap, the kick, no good. Missed the short one, 28-yarder to the left. Dogs come up empty, and that stings a little bit. They were looking pretty good on that drive, and then coughed up the football, fell on it, saved the possession, but then missed a scoring opportunity by missing a, a short field goal from the left hash mark. Yeah, two bad dogs can't come away with points there. That drive started very well. Obviously, the great kickoff return to put us in in tremendous field position and then very crisp on the first couple of plays until we stalled in the red zone. And here's uh, Barrow to kick it away. Makai Muse, the return man for Georgia. Got plenty of time to kick it. Low in over in kick. Going to come down to Makai at the 31. He's going to take it and run to the right. 35, 40. Breaks one tackle there. 50 at the numbers. 40. 30. He's got a he's got a convoy and he's gonna take it all the way for the touchdown. Makai Muse. Almost 70 yards on the punt return. And there's Mr. Excitement, Joystick Jr. right there on the far sideline and getting it into the end zone for the first score on the punt return. Makai Muse has been a human highlight reel to start this season. Fielded that punt, made a couple of guys miss, got some really nice blocks by a a couple of dogs that were in front of him. And then it was just all Makai Muse making guys miss and then turning on the afterburners. 69-yard return after a 43-yard punt. And Makai scored on a 54-yard pass reception last week and now scores his second touchdown here. And the dogs waiting the point after Carson Beck a little late getting onto the field as the holder, but they've got time, 18 seconds on the play clock. Peyton Woodring patiently waiting. Now Carson down, kneeling at the 11-yard line to spot the football for the point after try. William Mote to snap it. There's the snap, the placement, the kick is in the air, and right between the pipes and into the net, good. Georgia with a 7 to nothing lead. That touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia, proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, maybe that'll jumpstart these guys. A 69-yard punt return by Makai Muse set up beautifully. They walled it off on the far side, and he wasn't even touched after he got across midfield. No, he wasn't. Made a couple of... Ball State defenders miss and had pretty good angles on them, but just the speed of Muse to get outside of a couple potential tacklers. And again, some good blocks down the field by a whole host of uh, Bulldogs. But Makai Muse showing the Bulldog Nation what he is all about. Snap it back to Beck. Sets up on the 35. Nice pocket. Throws a deep ball. Open in the corner and caught. Touchdown, but a flag down at the 10. Caught by Cash Jones over the shoulder for an apparent touchdown. But let's check the penalty marker at the nine-yard line. Cole Pierce, the linebacker, was trying to keep up with Cash Jones, who caught that apparent touchdown. Defense number one. And it is a touchdown as referee Jason McArthur indicates the flag was on defensive pass interference on Ball State. So touchdown on the pass play to Cash Jones from Carson back. 27 yards on the throw into the far right corner. And a nice catch by the running back Jones, see? Boy, a great recognition, too, by Carson Beck there to see the matchup. You've got a running back on a linebacker. You know that Cash Jones can catch the football and... Cash Jones just ran by the Ball State defender and can't have a prettier thrown football than that one. Point after try by Peyton Woodring is up and good. 
And it's 38 to nothing. That Georgia touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia, proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. We've got a timeout at Sanford Stadium. The onslaught continues for number one ranked Georgia. The Bulldogs lead Ball State 38 to nothing. Our second half is brought to you by First Franklin Financial. Go see the friendly Franklin folks at one of their convenient Georgia locations. Back after this timeout on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Humphrey and Arguero made the stop. And I think he was spun around by uh, Raylan Wilson, who was injured in the preseason camp, but getting his first snaps today. And Wilson should have made that tackle behind the line, but he was unable to. He should have, Scott. He read that perfectly and, and had a chance to completely blow that play up, just missed the tackle. Fourth down and a couple. They won't get it. Not a chance. Knocked back the other way. They lost yardage on fourth and a yard. Went back the other way. Marquez Cooper not even close as the dogs blow it up. Gabe Harris liking what he just did. He's enjoying the moment on a fourth down stop, and the ball goes over on downs to the dogs at our 33-yard line. Boy, another dynamic freshman making a big play. So Georgia with the football now starting at our own 33-yard line and leading it 38 to nothing here with 2.07 to go in the third quarter. Beck, still the quarterback, hands off to Robinson, the running back. Big Rod breaks away from one man in the backfield to the far sideline. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He delivered a message over there. He's the last one standing, but he stepped out of bounds. They never got him down. All the way up close to midfield at the 47-yard line. 17-yard, uh, make it a 14-yard run with a little pain and misery delivered by Roderick Robinson at the end of that play. Boy, just throwing Ball State defenders to the ground. Scanna Energy first down for the Dogs. First and 10 at our 47. Nice 14-yard run by Robinson. Ball just north of the logo. Delpin motion to the right side. Beck pump fakes to the sideline. Throws a deep ball down the sideline to Delp. Caught at the 35, to the 30, to the 20. And knocked out of bounds inside the 20. He got in the Massey-Ferguson red zone before the defender knocked him out of bounds on the far sideline at the 12. Boy, fake slip screen, then just release Delp down the field. You get Ball State defenders that bite on the, the pump fake. Delp was running with nobody around him and a nice little hurdle yeah. at the end of that play. <laughs> He's been watching uh, his tight end room teammate, Brock Bowers. He hurdled the guy right there before he got tackled at the 12-yard line. Gain of 35 yards and a handoff going to Roderick Robinson. He'll hurdle over a couple of linemen on the ground at the 8 and hop right into the end zone for the touchdown. Boy, that's a little bit more like it by the big boys up front. Right behind Mims. Huge hole for Robinson to run through. 12-yard touchdown run. Roderick Robinson, the guy he hopped over was Dylan Fairchild, his own man, who was on the turf right around the far hash. And big number zero, he might be the new big O. He just hopped right over Fairchild and scooted into the end zone for the score to make it 44 to nothing. And here comes the point after try. Peyton Woodring. Out of the hold of Carson Beck and the snap of William Moat. And the execution of the extra point is good. And Georgia leads it 45 to nothing. That Georgia touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia. Proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. That was a good looking drive by the young guys. Most of them anyway. 12 yard touchdown run, Roderick Robinson. Got it in the end zone. Three plays and 67 yards in 121 seconds. Robinson now the leading rusher in the afternoon for the Dogs. Five attempts, 36 yards. Carson Beck, really solid day today. 23 for 30, 283 yards. Two touchdowns. Does have the one pick off of the ball that caromed off of D uh, Dylan Bell. That was the Georgia Medals drive summary from a doghouse to a dog's house. Georgia Medals has got you covered. The time on the drive was only 81 seconds, actually. Here's the kickoff by Zirkle. And it'll sail out of bounds before it got into the end zone. It crossed out of bounds before it hit the pylon. He was angling it left. And that's going to be a penalty marker on the dogs. And Ball State will have their best starting field position, perhaps, of the game. <laughs> so 
So Ball State on the 35, trailing 45 to nothing with 46 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia football is brought to you in part today by Dos Equis, proud partner of Georgia Athletics. So get a dose and enjoy Dos Equis responsibly. First and ten, Cardinals. Snap it back to Hatcher, slings it out to his left. To the running back out in the left flat, that's Barfield. Rico Barfield making the catch and heading to the sideline. And he's going to be tackled by C.J. Allen at the 43-yard line, a gain of eight. Put the ball down on the knee on the far hash. Ball State moving right here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Let's check in with Shock on the sidelines. Brought to you by attorney Ken Nugent. DJ. Hey, fellas, two injury updates. We saw Christian Miller go down. He's getting fluid, so he should be okay. And Ja'Cory Thomas, defensive back, has a right ankle and is out for the rest of the game. Thank you, sir. And uh, we'd lost Bullard in the first half today. Second down and two. Ball State. Hatcher wants to run it. Pocket was collapsing, so he... Stepped up and took off running right up the hash mark across the 45 to the 46. He picks up the first down. Darius Smith, sophomore from Baxley, Georgia, linebacker, made the tackle. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. But we got 15 minutes to go. And it's all Georgia today. Bulldogs 45, Ball State nothing. Our second half today brought to you by First Franklin Financial, visiting or serving our neighbors since 19. 19- 41. Well, I don't know how we didn't recover that. Kirby Smart yelling at somebody out on the numbers of the field. I mean, it was it was a good foot or two out in front of him as uh, the running back. Barfield was trying to get it back into his arms. He was able to fall on it. I guess he got a lucky bounce in that pile. Third and goal from the 10 for Ball State. Now whistles and uh, perhaps a timeout. Yep. Timeout. Ball State State head coach Mike New calls a timeout. And we will, too, with 9.14 to go. Dogs win the red zone earlier, missed a 28-yard field goal. After going 5-for-5 in the red zone last week against UT Martin. And we got a third down play coming up here, third down from the Cardinals' seven-yard line. Love it in motion to the right. Milton in the backfield with Beck in the shotgun. Snap it back to Carson, and he'll throw it right on the goal line. Caught by MRJ, Marcus Rosemey Jackson, tumbling in the end zone for the touchdown. Quick angle route there by Rosemey Jackson. Ball State brought all kinds of pressure, so as Rosemey Jackson made his little end cut, there wasn't a white jersey in sight. And Carson Beck, the small things that he does really well, his feet in the pocket, so good. Saw the pressure come, able just to give a little bit in the pocket to buy himself enough time for Rosemary Jack Saint to come open. Z just kind of floated it out there right on the goal line, and uh, Marcus was wide open right on the goal line. Seven-yard touchdown throw. Here's Peyton Woodring for the point after try. The snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick is good. Georgia 14 to nothing now. Leading Ball State here in the second quarter. That Georgia touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia, proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's pause 10 seconds. Station identification on the Georgia Bulldogs Sports Network. Georgia's defensive front really starting to take this football game over right now. We've seen great penetration, pushing the, the Ball State offensive line backwards a couple yards. Play fake and a quick throw off the helmet of Tyke Smith. It ricochets right to Chaz Chambliss, who made the <laughs> incomparable interception at the 30-yard line. I've never seen that. Boy, that ball went right off the hat of Tyke Smith. Doing, and then went back in the other direction right to Chaz Chambliss. Georgia has it on the interception. And where will they spot it down at the 30 of Ball State? Boy, great awareness right there. That ball was shot back right to Chaz. On, on, matter of fact, I think it actually didn't hit the helmet. It hit the foot. Hit the heel of the of the, uh, the receiver, it, didn't it, it? It hit the heel of the receiver, and then Chaz Chambliss is able to be right in the, the, the right position and get his hands up to make the catch. Wow, I thought it hit. I thought it ricocheted off our guy, but it hit the heel of uh, Mac, Max Webster, the, uh, the tight end target, and came up on the bounce right to Chaz Chambliss, and Georgia has the ball on the turnover at the Ball State 30-yard line. We'll see if the dogs take a shot right now. Quick change of possession. Back in the shotgun. Bell off to his right. 
Dillon will get the carry. Bounces out right. Oh, nice move. 15. Angles 10. Breaks the tackle. 5. Touchdown, Dillon Bell. Breaking ankles. What a run. Had a little bit of green grass and then a bunch of shake and bake that just left white jerseys on the ground grasping at air. Dude's got some skills in the backfield. Wow. Keontae Newsom, the linebacker, and Damian Charity are left picking up their laundry on the field after that move by Dylan Bell, who goes in for the 21-yard touchdown run, and Georgia suddenly up 20 to nothing with the point after on the way. Well, the running back room just got a little bit deeper. (laughs) How about that? Not too shabby. And he's got that breakaway speed, too, you like from your backs. Here's the point after try by Peyton Woodring, and the kick is up and good. And it's 21 to nothing, a 21-point explosion here in the second quarter by Georgia that was ignited by a 69-yard punt return by Makai Muse. That Georgia touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia, proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. Timeout here with 8.45 to go in the second quarter. Georgia 21, Ball State nothing. First half presented by attorney Ken Nugent. You know who to call. There's only one. One call, 1-800-CALL-KEN. We're back in a moment on the Bulldogs Sports Network. Dogs trying to salvage the drive and get points out of it. Snap, hold, kick, ball is in the air, and is good. 35-yard field goal for the freshman Woodring. And with that good kick, the good hands at Allstate will contribute to the Georgia Bulldogs General Scholarship Fund. Thank you, Allstate. Dogs add three more. 24 to nothing now is the lead over Ball State. And that was a uh, 12-play, 42-yard drive. We had a touchdown. It was taken off the board on the offensive pass interference penalty. We settled for three, 35-yard Woodring field goal. So 12 plays, 42 yards on the scoring drive. We had the ball for five minutes and 22 seconds, and the dogs lead it 24 to nothing. That's your Georgia Medals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Medals has got you covered. So Ball State back on the 25. They've been there a bunch today. They haven't moved off of that a whole lot. 149 to go in the second quarter. Georgia 24 to nothing lead. Pass tipped off the receiver. High up in the air. Caught by Tyke Smith on the tip. And he'll be tackled inside the 20 by the shoulder pads at about the 18-yard line. Ty Robinson. The receiver had to make the tackle. As Samanza has his second pass off one of his own players, tipped in the air and caught by a Georgia defender. Yeah, three picks now in the first half for Samanza, so this football game turning into a nightmare. I think it was Dalen Everett that was originally in, in coverage. Great job on the slant. And then Tyke Smith doing a great job of going up to get that ball at its highest point after the carom. Dogs with another opportunity here now after interception number three. I didn't see the replay who that bounced off of. Did we deflect that or did it bounce off the Ball State defender? No, so Everett got got his hand in there. I'm not sure if he is the one that that actually with the ball actually caromed off of or not, but he was in great position. Georgia will call a timeout on the exchange here. 30-second timeout. Georgia's got the ball right on the 20, so they'll start in the Massey-Ferguson red zone here with 1.41 to go. Georgia football brought to you by your Atlanta area BMW centers, providing legendary performance, exceptional offers, and a premium ownership experience. At BMW, they only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Visit BMWATL.com today. Proud sponsor of Georgia Athletics. To try to go up 31 to nothing. There's the snap by Moat, the hold by Beck, and the kick by Woodring. It's good, and it is. Georgia 31, Ball State nothing with 37 seconds to go. That Georgia touchdown brought to you by Engineered Solutions of Georgia, proud partner of the Georgia Bulldogs. A one-yard touchdown dive by Kendall Milton caps a four-play, 20-yard drive after a Georgia's third interception of the half. That's your Georgia Metals drive summary. From a doghouse to a dog's house, Georgia Metals has got you covered. So Starks has an interception today. His was just a clean old-fashioned way. I'm going to catch it, and the receiver isn't. And then the other two have been deflection 
<laughs> interceptions. Jazz Chambliss, perhaps with the oddest interception you might see. The pass caromed off the heel of the intended receiver up in the air, caught by Chambliss. And then moments ago, Tyke Smith caught a deflected ball for the Bulldogs' third interception of the half. Circle to kick it away, right to left. This one hangs high, spinning end over end. Going to come down deep in the end zone again. That's his 12th touchback of the season in the first game and a half. And Ball State trots back out to the 25-yard line. They have 37 seconds left. Do they try to work something here, Z, or are they just taking a knee and heading for the locker room? The the way the second quarter is going, I would just take a knee and get into the locker room as quickly as I could. Yeah, with uh, three first-half turnovers and 21 points off those turnovers for Georgia. But looks like they'll run a play here out of the pistol. Samanza going to turn around and hand it off to Cooper. He bounces off the first guy. We've seen that happen a lot today. Georgia has problems getting Cooper on the ground. And then he starts over again and pushes the ball five, six yards to the 31, tackled by Tyke Smith and Warren Brinson. And the clock continues to move down under 20 seconds now. That may be the only play that Ball State runs. Yeah, nifty little move there by Cooper. Got to the line of scrimmage and just jumped backwards to find a little bit of green grass. The Cardinals will let time expire here in quarter number two. So we head to halftime. And after the first 15 minutes, it was kind of like, what's going on? It was scoreless. But after 30 minutes, it's what you expect. It's Georgia 31 and Ball State nothing. The number one team in the land leading the visiting Ball State Cardinals. We'll catch up with Coach Kirby Smart here in just a second. Get the lost yardage back. They pick up 11. It's third down and two. Dogs go quickly. Beck wants a deep ball. Far sideline. Man-to-man coverage. And caught, I think. But then batted up in the air and caught on the tip. It's intercepted by Ball State. Running down the far sideline is Mallory. And tumbled out of bounds by Cedric Van Pran, the center, on the far side of the field. Right around the 35-yard line or so. The pass was going to Dylan Bell. And somehow it got deflected off a body on that far sideline. Tapped up in the air and intercepted by Ball State. And off Mallory went on the return. Well, kind of caught everybody by surprise a little bit. I don't think the, the Georgia offensive line and others not involved in the interception realized it was a pick for a, a second until Ball State was sprinting down the field. Still, even at the replay, it's kind of you kind of screen from how the ball popped up in the air. It went out of the hands of Bell. It hit him in the hands and then maybe off his knee or his leg and then popped up in the air off the receiver. And then uh, it was uh, Mallory who returned it down to the Georgia 42-yard line. Also, Ball State on offense after Georgia's first turnover. Another tipped pass interception. We've seen a bunch of those today. Most of them belonging to Georgia, however. And now there's five of them talking about the flag thrown at the 22. This might be the longest discussion we've had all day. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no foul. You just lost your hat, Bob. Just pick it up and we'll keep playing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's exactly what that was. We're, we're, guys, we really need to end this this football game. <laughs> Let's just pretend there wasn't a foul. Dogs are on the uh, 18, our own 18 yard line. Let's see if they can churn out one more scan of energy first down uh, before the end of the game. Well, uh, victory they formation. Yeah, <laughs> they're just going to take an E. Brock Vandegrift back on to take the snaps and take a knee, and Dogs will get out of here in 50 seconds. So we'll run the clock off, or run the clock down, get the rest of the time off the clock, and uh, get ready for South Carolina now. And the SEC opener next Saturday at 3.30 right here at Sanford Stadium. Vandegrift will take a second knee, and that should do it. He won't have to take another snap. And the coaches are jogging to the middle of the field for their post-game handshake. Kirby Smart and Mike New for Ball State, who made their first appearance in Athens today. They got a big old check, but they also got a big old whooping. 45-3 to was the final score. What's what's worth more to 
a Ball State team, Z. Uh, the check or the whooping? Well, well I, I, I think they're very grateful for the check, but you never like to come in and get beat up like like the dogs beat them up today. Really a dominant performance for, for Georgia. Uh, another relatively slow start. Uh, not as not as bad or slow as what we saw last week, uh, yeah. but, but just didn't finish on a couple of drives uh, early on in the football game. But then the second quarter, it, it was just it was the dominance you really thought that you would see from this Georgia Georgia team every single time they step on the field. They, they just suffocated Ball State. Three first half interceptions by the Dogs. They turned that into 21 points, and the Dogs put 31 on the board in the second quarter and go on to the route today. 45 to three. Your final score, Georgia number one in the nation, a winner over Ball State. As we said, up next, it's South Carolina. That'll be next Saturday here, 3.30 between the hedges for the Bulldogs and the Gamecocks in the Southeastern Conference opener for these teams. Dogs a winner today. We go to 2-0 and on the season, and we'll head into our postgame coverage. We'll hear from the head coach and DJ Shockley in the locker room in just a bit. But when we come back, Hondo's with us here on the Bulldogs Sports Network. 